Hello my soccer universe. Let's look at what happened in the Bundesliga. I am wearing Dortmund. Yes, still only two Bundesliga jerseys, but the third one is coming soon. Third one is coming soon, working on more. Um, I'll let you guess what it will be for now. Uh, just one hint, it's again not one of my favorites, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, I will talk only about uh, Germany and Austria this time because uh, although I usually pack the Russian league in there, they, they have three Monday games. And yeah, since they were not that great, uh, great games in there in any way, I think it's not that much lost. But I wanted to tell you, if you want to watch the Russian Premier League, you can do so on YouTube. They broadcast all th everything live and I have to say, if there's a good game coming, I will make a point of watching the Russian Premier League because honestly, I've never seen um, a Russian League game, so I'm kind of intrigued. There's something with the rights that didn't go right. But let's move to Central Europe. Yes, uh, I heard already that coronavirus is already affecting the German League. We already have that the Swiss League is suspended. It's Currently, I'm planning to put the Swiss League in next season uh, into that uh, re um, review as well. But we currently have the Swiss League suspended. The German League will have uh, most likely games behind closed doors. So more on that in my What to Watch video towards the end of the week. But everything in North Rhine-Westfalen, which means everything Dortmund, Köln, Gladbach, all those are um, behind closed doors. It's gonna get big. Let's see how this will develop. But for now, let's see what uh, happened this weekend. Um, we had on Friday night Paderborn losing at home to Köln. Köln in continuing their great run. Uh, Mere and Hector. Hector's goal was really nice, I have to say. Um, Make it tuna to have Paderborn can pull one back, but in the end, Köln runs away winners. And I think that Köln probably looks rather safe at the moment and I'm very happy about that. Uh, then Leverkusen against Frankfurt. This was uh, billed as one of the bigger games uh, of the 330 kickoff. And to be honest, it never really was because Frankfurt had, I think at first, one measly shot on goal that really didn't have many chances. Uh, and Kai Havertz, that everyone at the moment is talking about, um, already in the fourth minute gave them the lead. Uh, was a, a nicely played um, attacking move. Uh, Bella Rabi, 10 minutes later, makes it 2-0 after an assist by Paulinho, who was the other man of the match, to be honest. Uh, and, you know... The assist by Havertz was Diaby, but then it was all uh, Bellarabi, Havertz and Paulinho who got everything going there. Uh, Paulinho in the 49th adds uh, a third in the 55th adds a fourth. And again, it was within 10 minutes and the game was more or less done. Frankfurt had had some uh, chances, could have maybe made a goal, but in the end uh, it's again a foreign uh, goal defeat for Frankfurt at Leverkusen. Last season they lost 6-2. Um, yeah. Frankfurt does not look all that good in the Bundesliga. Leverkusen, though, they are really getting something going. And I have to say, Lever Leverkusen looks dangerous uh, for now. Let's see where this will go. Many people have been distract detractors of um, Peter Bosch, but Leverkusen is something you don't, is, is a team that you currently you don't want to face. Schalke Hoffenheim was a tale of two halves because I think in the first half it was more Schalke that was. Um, uh, on the attack and West McKinney after a uh, through ball from uh, Kenny gives um, Schalke the lead. However, in the second half, everything that Schalke had going forward uh, suddenly got lost and it was uh, Hoffenheim who first had a goal taken uh, off uh, through VAR and then a little bit later after assist by Hübner Baumgartner makes it 1-1. Potentially there was even the win in there. Um, kind of a weird game. And again, Hoffenheim just losing by six to Bayern and now pulling out. Yes, Schalke is not all that great, but at least midweek Schalke had a good performance against Bayern. So most Schalke fans, including me, will be rather disappointed. Hertha Werder. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was a, this was a truly crazy game because after six minutes, Werder had a 2-0 lead and everything seemed to be geared. Yeah. Werder is going to take the points and Berlin is really going to plummet into um, the abyss slowly but surely. 
Uh, but Stark, after this is by Plottenhardt, got a goal back right before the half, and I think this made a spark. And remember, Hertha was already three down to Düsseldorf uh, last weekend. When Cunha made in the 60th 2-2, I think most Hertha fans were thinking, yeah, we're going to beat Werder. No, uh, no more um, goals to score. I think Hertha was a little bit uh, more on the front foot, but I think overall it was a very uh, deserved uh, draw there. And it adds 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Freiburg finally can get the, monkey, the Union monkey off their backs. They have been losing twice to Union so far this time. Uh, it was rather clear. Salah, Günther make it 2-0 uh, by the 55th. Then Anderson puts one back. But Koch puts the nail in the coffin. And Freiburg finally gets a win. Well deserved. Wolfsburg-Leipzig was a weird game because... Uh, it was very stale. There was not much going on. Uh, Leipzig only in the second half finally gets nice attacks going, but it was they didn't have to punch forward. Now they're a little bit more solid on back forward. Uh, it's lacking. And um, for the Champions League, I'm not sure how this is boding. Um, and then Gladbach Dortmund. That was the big matchup, and I expect it to be there. Many protests. I have to say, the whole Bundesliga round, there were not too many, too many protests. Kind of disappointing after the ultras made this joint big statement that they are even gonna go for that. Maybe uh, they said let's keep it down for this time. But I really was expecting Gladbach Dortmund to be something um, big there. What can I say? Uh, the game was mostly Dortmund, uh, especially in the first half. And the first goal was all about Azar. The way he put it in um, and made the turn. Uh, even uh, created the chance himself uh, was really something nice to see um, and gave Dortmund a very deserved 1-0 lead at the half. It could have been even more. Uh, in the second half, Gladbach comes out um, with a little bit more, um, you know, cohesive and actually get the equalizer through Stindl uh, after a player assist. However, in the end, it is Dortmund who prevail with Hakimi, uh, Finishing a counter attack after an assist by Sancho. And Dortmund runs away 2 1 winners uh, in a pretty huge game because, as, as, as we'll see, this will keep Dortmund in touch after Leipzig dropping points. Now Dortmund still at least stays somewhat in contention. Gladbach, that could hurt that one. Um, with the Leipzig draw, everyone was saying, yeah, Bayern can get five points clear if they beat Augsburg and boy, of Leipzig at least, uh, four points of Dortmund. And boy, did that not look good. First of all, the game, a huge choreography uh, celebrating 120 years Bayern Munich, which happened actually last um, week, uh, which was impressive, I have, I have to say. Um, but then the Bayern anniversary jerseys, I know all the historic jerseys, it didn't look right. And this ghosting with sponsors, now it's the third time. We had first Dortmund, then we had uh, Chelsea, and now... Bayern is doing, leave the sponsor off. Why do we have a white sponsor on a white shirt? And also this Bayern alternative crest is one that I really like. I always thought this was a joke by computer games because um, it was a not sanctioned crest or whatever. It looks awful. Um, and the game with also Augsburg then playing in black and red, I just visually did not connect. And the first half was just horrible. I think Bayern had one semi-shot on goal. Well, it changed in the second half after a really nice uh, pass by Boateng from close to the center line over the defense to um, Müller. Müller one times it into the net. And this they said in the comments, yeah, this is a pass for all the packing friends. Packing meaning, uh, you know, to get the value of a pass. If a pass uh, takes out as many opponents as possible, or possible, then you get a high packing value kind of uh weighing the passes. Not sure how useful the statistic is in the end, but it's one of those nice new measures out there. Uh, Augsburg actually uh, had a huge chance to equalize and even had a goal taken off uh, late. I have to say, Bayern up until that point was wasteful with, with the chances and it would have been uh, very typically if Augsburg then gets uh, the equalizer, but uh, Niederlechner was just by a hair offside. And so Goretzka, after an assist for Gnabry, K 
can make it 2-0 for Bayern in stoppage time. And the celebration continues. Bayern is clear and late on. Mainz in a, a relegation battle beats, oh no, no other beats, uh, gets a 1-1 against Düsseldorf. Mainz had the lead through uh, Erstonali and then Karaman in the 85th can equalize. So the new table uh, sees Bayern four points clear of Dortmund, as we said, Leipzig one point behind, and now it's Leverkusen in fourth spot. And although Leverkusen is eight points behind, Le Leverkusen is the informed team in the Bundesliga at the moment. Gladbach now only in fifth. Schalke, is somewhere in the middle of nowhere, probably will make European spots. Uh, same thing as Wolf, Wolfsburg. I mean, uh, of the teams here that have 36 or 38, seven points, I think Freie, Freiburg is the one that's most exciting, but they're also too inconsistent. Hoffenheim hangs in there, and then I think we can talk potentially about the relegations, although Köln and Union will have nothing to do with that. Uh, Frankfurt, a little bit more in danger. Hertha gets a vital point, but it is really... Düsseldorf and Mainz, they were fight, fighting it out and it was a vital point for Düsseldorf. You still need to get more. Uh, a win for Düsseldorf would have been very important. I think for Werder and especially Paderborn, it just does not look good. You need to get a result going. In, you need to get some something going in Bremen or in Paderborn to have a chance. I honestly do not see also had the draw in the German Cup semifinal Sunday. And yeah, <laughs> we get... It's pretty clear where this is going. We get Saarbrücken at home to Leverkusen. Uh, can Saarbrücken make another upset? I doubt it. Leverkusen, as I said, is the informed team. And Bayern Munich at home to Frankfurt. I would love for Frankfurt to see the upset, but I think we have a Bayern against Bayern final. That's where this is geared to, which could be intriguing. Not necessarily for me, because those are not necessarily my favorite teams in Germany. Let's move to Austria, where we had a final round. Uh, of the base, uh, you know, the first round where 12 teams are playing uh, against each other. We already knew that Lusk has won that round. Uh, it was just a matter of uh, who finishes where in the standings and how many points uh, will be then in the final round. Um, Tirol beats Hartberg 3-0, which was uh, very big for them in the relegation fight. But Hartberg, you know, they achieved already that they will not get relegated in a championship round. Uh, I think it was more party there. Uh, Admira beats Alter, also a big win, 2-0. Uh, Austria only 0-0 against St. Burton. So even if they would have won at Sturm, would not have uh, been enough, I think. And Rapid gets a late equalizer against Wolfsburg. Uh, to secure third spot, which was kind of, it's not a biggie, but I have to say I'm, I am a little bit worried about uh, Rapid. The other goals uh, were, Funtas gave Rapid a lead in stoppage time, but even stoppage time, Weissmann can equalize, and then Weissmann makes it 2-1, and then in stoppage time, as I said, Hoffmann makes it 2-2 two, two for Rapid. On Sunday, the two big boys were playing, and they were playing on Sunday because they had the cup tie. Um, Salzburg played better, but were lucky to not be 1-0 down at the half because there were uh, huge changes for Sturm Graz. But then uh, early in the second half, they make uh, the 1-0, I mean, right after get go through Okugawa. And then Pat uh, then Sturm was coming, uh, Salzburg a little bit hanging back, but uh, once Patzentaka makes it 2-0. The game was done and does. I was actually hoping for a draw between those two. And Lusk against Mattersburg. I uh, got the win, but paid dearly. Goiginger, um, who has been great in the uh, fall. Uh, this now he was not so well already in third. I mean, he had to come, come off uh, ACL injury potentially. We have to see. Uh, Klaus, who had already a big chance earlier, gets the 1 0. Lusk gets a penalty in the second half. Uh, I think there was even before the chance for Martinsburg, the only really one where they actually could lob over Schlager, but uh, it goes to the side. Penalty, Klaus uh, is saved after already the goalkeeper had two huge, 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 huge saves. Uh, before that, then the game <laughs> completely settles down, not, nothing happening. A last minute free kick for Martinsburg could have given equal, but no, last was the 11th game away from home in a row. Uh, given with the last one from last season, that's 12 in a row, that uh, equalizes the new record. So now in the standings we have 
Lusk 54 means 27 points in the championship round. Uh, Salzburg 48 means 24 points. So from 6 to 3, it's a very fair um, uh, format that we have. Rapid gets 20, Wolfsburg gets 19, and Sturm Graz gets 16 points in the second round. Hartberg, it is rounding down, so it, they will get 14 points. Only if they're level on points, then there will be a half point. Add. You know, it's the tiebreaker, basically, if you're level on points. Because you would have won more. Uh, in the relegation playoffs, yeah, Austria Wien, they have a chance to get European spots because if you win that one, then you there's a whole playoff thing. But they cannot be played at home because the Women's Champions League final is played in their stadium at the same time. Absolutely crazy. Altach um, is also there, and then Admira. So it's a four way race for bottom Admira, Swarovski, Mattersburg, and St. Pölten. Gonna be interesting where this will go. Anyway. Let me know your thoughts on both Bundesligas. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.